Hey guys, it's Sean Sundahl once again. And today's video, I'm gonna show you how much, in reality, how much it costs in order to become an armed private security officer. Now, I work in the state of California. It doesn't necessarily matter where you work in. You can work in New York or Texas. The fees are gonna be different, but the setup and the expenses that I'm gonna show you is across the board everywhere else. So credibility, um, who am I, what do I do? I'm a licensed private investigator, um, licensed private security guard, and I'm also a law enforcement officer for undisclosed agency. I'm licensed by the state of California as a BSIS certified instructor to provide firearm instruction to private security officers. Those who wanna carry a firearm on duty uh, they would go through an instruct, a licensed instructor such as me. So I don't represent BSIS. I don't represent any law enforcement agency or any government agency. The opinions in this video are strictly my own. Now, I am also a law enforcement range master. And I do that also uh, as a collateral duty for my undisclosed agency. Now, I'm gonna, might, I might be able, I might um, say some facts or things that might appear factual or some things that I've been through. I know that there are defense attorneys out there that are always trying to find um, intelligence on officers, law enforcement officers, in order to win their cases. Uh, just because I say something doesn't necessarily mean it happened. I'm just using it for illustration purposes. Okay, so let's begin. The exposed permit in the state of California and an exposed permit is a permit to carry a firearm that shows, shows in public. Other times you can get a concealed permit, but that is through uh, the local sheriff's department or police department in most places. But California, it's $100. Um, you have to get live scanned. And this is the background check that they're talking about. That's $87. And then you gotta pay somebody to roll your um, fingerprints. Okay, so that's another $30. So you total these um, and you have, you know, this amount here and you have maybe about $230. Uh, those of you that are in other states, it might cost a little bit more, it might cost less. It just depends on where you live. So these fees right here are not negotiable. In California, we have a psych assessment now uh, that costs $60, okay? That psych assessment will assess whether or not you're mentally stable or unstable to carry a firearm. Whether I agree with that, that's totally different issue. Most places, unless you're a veteran and you're using some of that veteran benefits, um, you get charged a, tra a training fee. Um, typically, it'll run you between $150 to $200, depending where you're at in my state. Your state's gonna vary, but you got a training fee, maybe about $200, and I estimate everything on the high end over here, just so that you don't get lowballed and then you get surprised because you have an expense that's higher than what you thought. You'll have a range fee, ammunition fee, okay? Ammo's is high right now, you guys, so expect to pay more for that. Range fees, they're gonna vary between $10 and maybe $30. It just depends on where you go. Um, so just the whole training fee and range, maybe about uh, $280. Now, this video is more designed for those of you who might use this video in your training organization to uh, provide a realistic cost of what it takes to be an armed security officer, particularly in California, but you can use in other states. Um, but for the most part, if you're seeing this video, you're watching this video, I would expect that you don't have a lot of gun handling experience. If, if you do, you don't even have to watch the video, um, but there's some tips here and I think you're gonna save some money, so I would watch it till the end. Anyhow, before you buy a gun, find out if there's a holster that's made for that, okay? Make sure that holster designed for that firearm that you wanna use. So you can get a firearm, maybe a, a Smith & Wesson shield that's very, very compact, that's used for concealed carry, that has a um, little bit over a three inch barrel, but for you to have a duty holster, okay, a duty holster that you would carry um, out on the field for that is not gonna happen. They're not gonna design, a, I, I don't know of any holster 
um, that will fit a small compact gun. So before you look for the gun and buy the gun, look for the holster. You're going to save so much more money. Okay, about holsters. Get a level two. Um, I see on YouTube, private security officers, you guys are wearing the pancake holsters. Um, pancake, they call it pancake because it appears flat like this. You guys, uh, this has almost no retention. So let me, let me talk about the different levels of retention. You have a level one retention and all that level one is, is the friction, okay? It's just the friction of the holster is keeping the gun at bay. That's level one. Level two, you might have something extra that you have to do, okay? Maybe uns unsnap the strap here, okay? So we're, at, we're already at level two. Um, for this holster, and by the way, this is the 511 holster. Uh, I'll probably end up putting some links for all this equipment I'm showing you guys in the descriptions of my video here. Uh, but anyhow, this this would be a level two holster. Also, in, a, in addition to that pancake style holster, because you have to press down on something, okay? You have to press down this level, level in order to take, take the gun out. You guys, do not go out on the field with anything less than a level two holster, okay? Somebody's gonna end up taking the gun away from you and end up killing with, killing you with it and other people with it. It's extremely dangerous. Level one holster, okay? Okay, this is a, a Phobos holster. The only retention is just the friction of the gun. I don't have to do anything else. You can get a level three um, in law enforcement operations, I don't have a level three, it's just too much to think about in a gunfight or some type of stressful situation. But here is a level one uh, holster. Let's just say you work a post and there's nobody around. Um, I don't have an issue with you just carrying even a, even a pancake holster. Um, now notice that this is even considered level two, but it's still a pancake. It's, it just, it's a flimsy holster in my opinion. And it does not, can't the gun out far enough to my right so I can easily access it. That's that's one of the reasons why I do not like the pancake holster. Okay, so with 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 the Phobos holster or with a level one retention, if I'm at a post, maybe I'm guarding in a warehouse or something like that, then I can easily justify just having a level one retention. It's you know quick and easy. It's quick and fast. Justify it. But you work in a more busy area. And definitely. Now, think about this. What if you go to the warehouse and then you take your break in some type of fast food restaurant or something like that? Now you're closer to people. Okay, now you're exposing yourself to risk and other people because they're going to end up getting your gun using against other people. So that, that's why I, it doesn't matter, in my opinion, where you're at, at minimum level two. But you can get away with it with a level one. Now, let's just say you never go anywhere um, you, you're always at this warehouse. Hey, go for it. And by the way, it's a warehouse where there's nobody there. Maybe you're protecting the property at night. Okay. So get a holster. 511 holster. Um, I think that they're decent. Uh, there's a learning curve to it. You have to grip the gun a certain way, um, and press the level a certain way also. And there's a little learning curve um, to it. Level two holster, Safari Land. This will probably cost you a good $160. Um, the level one is the friction of the holster, holding the gun together, holding the gun at bay in place. And then you're gonna you're gonna push the level the lever down and then forward. Okay, that opens up the holster. Um, it's more safe. Okay, it's definitely more safe. So make sure that they have the holster that has well, they make sure they have the holster for the gun that you want to buy. Safari Land, you guys uh, in private security, I've used this one um, in law enforcement, lose it, used it also, very common. This will run you a good $160. Good holster, run you $160. Now, about <clears throat> a little bit, a little extra thing about holsters is you might want to consider getting a holster that is designed to hold a flashlight, okay? This gun right here, 
uh, Glock 22 is designed to hold a flashlight, okay? If I want to have a flashlight attachment on here, on this pick and tear rail, okay, and put it in my $160 or $150 holster, it's not going to fit because it's not designed for that. So if you end up wanting to get a flashlight, you're going to have to buy a new holster and that's another expense. You're going to have to spend more money on that. Okay, where are we at? Um, the gun. Okay, the gun. Um, I hate to specify a certain caliber for you, but, and it drives me nuts, but in private security, especially in California, I'm going to recommend right now at this moment of time, a 40 cal. Okay, I recommend a 40 cal. And here's why. Many of the government contracts, the federal government contracts, require you to have a 40 caliber um, handgun. Okay, not nine, not anything else. They require you to have a 40 caliber. So that's why it's a good thing. These government jobs that are private security contract related pay very good. I've seen starting from 20 bucks all the way up to $30 an hour. Um, sometimes even more than the law enforcement officer, but you have to have that 40 caliber weapon. I'll show you in a minute right now how or why a with several manufacturers out there that manufacture their handguns in 40 caliber, you're able to easily swap the 40 caliber barrel into the nine millimeter barrel. Matter of less than a minute. I'm gonna show you how to do that in a minute. You basically get two guns for the price of one. Okay, and it's 40 caliber to nine millimeter. I don't know about all the other uh, calibers. Uh, most commonly of most handguns that are uh, of a name brand, you could swap into 22 caliber, but the, the popular one is 40 to a nine. For most shooters, the nine millimeter is a smooth operating weapon. There is less felt recoil than the 40 cal. The 40 cal is a high powered round. It's overcharged a little bit. And because of that, you're gonna have a lot more felt recoil, okay? The nine millimeter, it's smooth, it's easy to shoot, okay? Most of the government contracts, like I said earlier, they're gonna want you to, or many of them want you to have a 40 cal. Right now, in, in the past year, there's been a transition to the nine millimeter. See, whatever the FBI requires or issues at that moment of time of the year, uh, that trickles down to other agencies using the same handgun or same caliber. Okay, everybody seems to follow the FBI, and FBI switched to a 9mm a couple of years ago. And I think Border Patrol in 2021, they're going to switch to 9mm, and United States Customs, I think they already, they already swapped to the 9mm. So, I think for the most part of these government contracts, they tend to... Um, copycat the the federal agencies and to make that a requirement so get the get the 40 caliber and i'll show you in a minute how to swap out the barrels 40 caliber will will suit two purposes and that other purpose might be you might have to have a nine millimeter um, or maybe you want to have a nine the first thing that we're going to do is verify that the weapon does not have a magazine in the well Okay, it does not verify that it is unloaded. Okay, look down the barrel, nothing. Okay, cool. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and disassemble it. All right. There we go. Here's the guide rod spring here. 40 caliber barrel, okay. And this is the nine millimeter conversion. And this is Lone Wolf. Put a link in the description below there. Okay, I'm gonna put the guide rod back in. Okay. And slide back. Okay. Pull the trigger. Cool. Now we have nine millimeter. All for the price, really, of the 40 cal. Pretty neat, huh? Now, 
when you buy your gun, try to look for one that has a Picanty ra rail. See right here? This is a Picanty rail. And you want this because you're able to put attachments on it. Preferably flashlight. See that? This is the Surefire Ultra 300. Okay. Now in the future, if you decide that you want a flashlight and you don't have a Picanty rail on your gun that you just bought, the bad thing is you might have to end up buying a brand new gun. Okay, that's gonna cost, you know, for a, a Glock, easy, easy 600 bucks. I mean, just, just the gun, um, depending on which one you get, obviously. Okay, so get all this stuff now Buy, all this stuff, buy the proper stuff now, buy the proper holster, um, get a duty type weapon that has a Picanty rail and maybe even the flashlight, but get all that stuff now because you're gonna end up paying more money in the long run. Let's talk about brands of firearms. You, those of you who are in California, you're for a duty type weapon for security use, that's a reliable handgun, you're stuck with very few guns. You're stuck with a Glock, um, perhaps nothing earlier than a, a version four or the or the a Glock five. Um, you have Springfield Armory also. This is a Springfield uh, Armory XD. You can, you can carry this one. Whatever is on the California handgun roster, and you can look it up on the Department of Justice website for the state of California, Whatever's on that website, you can use for duty use, okay? But it has to be on the roster. So Springfield XD. Now, the reason why I am bringing these two weapons into this video, the Springfield XD and the Glock 22, is because to me, they're affordable price, okay? They're within the 550 to $600 um, or $610 range. And right here, I put $610, that's including tax in the state of California. For a good handgun that I would trust with my life, I, tr I would trust those two in my life. Don't get no um, high point, okay? Nine millimeter high point. Don't get these pieces of junk out there um, that may not work when you need them the most, okay? Revolvers, very reliable. Um, just make sure that your revolver is at least a four inch barrel. Even with these handguns, uh, these are minimum a four inch barrel. So if you use them for duty use, uniform duty use, okay, at least a four inch barrel. Five inch, you're gonna, you're gonna, you might have problems finding the holster, but the reason why you want the four inch is because there are a lot of holsters that will accompany the four inch ones, not the three inch ones, the two inch ones, forget it, but the four inch, okay? So make sure you get it from a reputable vendor. Those of you who are not in the state of California, other states, Georgia, um, you know, Texas, Florida, Wisconsin, elsewhere, you guys can get all types of other handguns, okay? That are not on any type of, of, of no list, okay? Those of you in California, if you want to have a gun that's not um, on the handgun roster list, you have to do a private party transfer. You basically need to find somebody that is located somewhere else that has legal possession of one of the guns that you want and that's willing to do a transfer with you, okay? But that's not what this video is about, but you, you can do that too. Um, okay, so you have, it, you have a draws fee in our state of California, and that's just... Uh, it, it's basically a, like a firearms licensing fee. Department of Justice just wants to get their money. So they're going to take $74. Um, duty ammo, $50. Okay, now that's for a 45 caliber. Again, I'm, I'm pricing these things on the higher end. This is Hornady Critical Duty. These are the rounds that you're going to want to carry with your weapon, okay? So this is 40 caliber, and in the middle is this rubbery piece. This is a hollow point, jacket hollow point. 
uh, when it strikes flesh, okay, it's supposed to all stay in one piece all together, and this rubber piece um, helps. But get uh, get some type of uh, duty ammunition that's meant meant or designed for law enforcement. Um, Hornady critical duty, not a bad way to go, but make sure that it's hollow points and it's made for duty use. Okay, don't be getting no training ammunition. Um, don't get or don't use training ammo such as this. This is a full metal jacket. Okay, this is a liability to you and your employer. What ends up happening is this is going to hit somebody and it's going to go right through and hit somebody else. Yes, the same can be said for a hollow point, but full metal jacket just creates more of a liability. Okay, it's not designed to mushroom open up like the hollow point rounds I was showing you. So, duty ammo about 50 bucks, depending on how many you get, depending on the brand. Okay, a duty belt with magazine pouches. Um, you can get one that I'm actually wearing. Let me take this one off for a minute. Okay, this is a cheap duty belt. Um, I think I got this one on Amazon. It was between 30 and $40. I'll probably end up putting a link in the description below. Um, for your duty belt, you're going to want to know whether or not your employer will allow you to carry nylon, okay? Or will they require you to carry a basket weave leather, okay? Or something that, that is just plain, plain leather looking. You need to find out these things first, okay? But these things will typically um, last you, you know, good, a good 10 years, okay? I've had a belt that lasted me, um, you know, year year 12 or 13 okay and then you know obviously you're going to gain some weight over time and you know, your, your belt's just going to end up ripping up open one day so um, get a duty belt okay you're going to need magazine pouches i don't have any with me right now but magazine pouches is going to hold your magazines okay this is a magazine for those of you who are new to firearms okay i would i would carry at least two okay all right uh, body armor Six hundred dollars. You know, I saw an advertisement. It was about three hundred dollar body armor, and then I seen another YouTuber do a test on it, and it did not pass his test. Um, you guys don't don't wing this, okay? This is your life. Um, get something that's reputable. Now, this is a point. Um, this is point blank body armor, level two, level two. Okay. It's designed to defeat most handgun rounds, not the exotic ones, but most of them. And this cost me about thirteen, fourteen hundred dollars. Okay, this is what I use for law enforcement purposes. Um, but you can get a decent vest for about six hundred dollars. I saw another YouTuber say that he found um, a vest. Actually, his name is I think Defcon Three or Defcon. Um, subscribe to his channel. He has some some pretty good tips also. I just barely subscribed to his channel. He got his for about $60. He talks about his equipment. Um, that second, that's uh, secondhand use. Now, yeah, uh, you know, $60 armor um, is gonna most likely work, but after five years, the manufacturer's warranty expires. Now, if I shot a vest that's 14 years old and it defeated all the rounds that it was supposed to, okay? It just the warranty or the guarantee is is five years okay um, so you can get a cheaper vest I prefer to get my own you guys there's some nasty funky scents that people leave inside of here in the little crevices of, of these vests when you take off the panels here and you just can't get rid of these smells I just prefer my own stuff but you could definitely get one for 600 bucks um, maybe $500 um, you might be able to to get one if i see any armor that i think um, that you should at least consider a little bit more research i might put some links also flashlight okay you need a flashlight you carry a gun you need a flashlight you need a flashlight to be able to identify the target so there's a deadly threat you got to be able to identify it okay and i really recommend that you have a, a flashlight your flashlight is attached to your rail um, i was involved in a officer involved shooting about 14 15 years ago as a police officer a guy sicked his uh, pit bull on me and i did not have a flashlight attached to my handgun at the time i had a glock 21 and i fired 
a lot of I fired a lot of rounds, and some of those rounds could have hit. They they could have hit um, somebody that was asleep in their house. Okay, so at that time, I think I was carrying my flashlight like this, um, and when you carry it like this, there is some stability. Okay, um, but I don't have two hands. I don't have full control over my handgun, so I I missed more than I should have. Okay. After that incident, I end up getting a flashlight, um, a flash, uh, attachable flashlight. Okay, I think I got a, sh a Surefire, and I had to buy a brand new holster. Okay, it cost me one hundred sixty dollars because the other holster didn't accommodate the um, the light. Okay, now those of you who are animal lovers, again, I apologize uh, for mentioning that, but that's I'm just being real with you guys. I mean, that's that that's what happened. And I had no other choice. The other choice is I would have got badly injured by a pit bull. Okay. Now, um, let me see here. In the end, you're going to most likely, for all this equipment, pay about 2081 um, In this whole area over here, the holster, the gun, the draws, fees, the duty, ammo, the flashlight, body armor, um, you know, the... the, the a reputable manufacturer of, of manuf reputable a firearm of reputable manufacturer um, y you can mess around with this prices a little bit okay so maybe not necessarily two thousand dollars um, 2081 you could maybe cut it if you don't get some of these things but these are all the things I recommend now I also recommend that before you get your firearm permit you get a baton permit you get trained in taser if your employer allows you to carry that. Um, I also recommend pepper spray certification and hand-to-hand -hand defense. Okay, you, you got You have to use all of these. You have to at least consider these less lethal options before you get into the lethal options. Now, one thing I just forgot. Um, I I see some security officers that wear an outer carrier. This is an outer carrier. Should you get one or not, find out if the company that you're gonna work for allows you to carry these outer carrier vests, okay? If you, if they don't, you just wasted a good two to $300 on a carrier. Now I got this one for maybe about $130. Um, I might put a link in the description below also. This is Condor, um, Condor vest. That I get, and I don't use this for duty. I, I use this for training purposes. You know, you're rolling around the ground, um, brown. You, you, when you, when your when your stuff gets stained um, or dirty, and when it's on black, you know, you got black black equipment. It, it really shows. But here, you could stuff it off, and no one will ever know you're rolling around in the dirt. And you could look look a lot more presentable. Okay, but if you get a vest like this where you conceal underneath your shirt or beneath your shirt you can easily take the panels off of here and put it in here so you go to a company that allows you to carry an outer carrier vest put it in here okay if, if, if you want okay as for um, drop holsters I see some security officer wearing drop holsters um, I Generally, do not like to wear a tack holster or drop holster unless I'm carrying a load-bearing vest. Um, and I, I'm in an area or a situation where I know I'm gonna have my, use my rifle. Um, and just because I get more room to play around, load-bearing vest, um, it could potentially block all the areas that you might need access to, other other equipment on your belt. You know, with this, with this tack um, holster here that, that drops down, gives you a little bit more room. But for for duty use, it looks cool and everything, but functionality, I don't. Uh, it you know it's 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 not it's not it's not for me. Okay, I like to be I like to be able to access my equipment um, maybe a little bit quicker. And with this, it's a little bit lower and there's a little bit training curve to it, okay? You practice all the time, don't worry about it. And then you walk around and your pant leg keeps flying up. Um, it, 
it, it just gets, it can just get cumbersome and annoying, okay? And your employer may not allow you to carry um, one of these, these holsters because maybe it looks too militaristic, okay? Unfortunately, you have to put up with different supervisors, different employers. Um, another thing I just forgot, on the barrel swap, interchangeable barrels, um, you know, right now I have the Glock switched to the nine millimeter barrel. Right now it's some gray tone. You might get some asshole supervisor, qualified manager that's gonna inspect your gun. Hey, that's not factory. Um, you can only have factory um, parts on your gun and you, you're not gonna have a choice but to listen to that, okay? Now, I like to know why. You know, why can I not carry this, this part that probably exceeds the factory um, expectations, okay? Um, if, I, if I get a little bit more justification, which I, me as, a, as an employee, I'm not entitled to any type of justification, but if I hear a supervisor tell me why, you know, why they're making the decision, then I'll respect them a lot more, okay? You don't have to. Okay, guys, I hope this video helps. I'm gonna have more videos, maybe on firearms. I might do a video on the course of fire that our state of California has, maybe provide some tips, but I'm gonna start talking more about um, those of you who are line staff, those of you who may not be a supervisor, maybe aspiring to be a supervisor or a manager or maybe own your own company, but I'm gonna talk about uh, leadership issues as well. Uh, those of you that wanna own your own private security company or private investigations company in the state of California. I'm gonna to continue to make those videos, but I'm also making videos on issues that pertain to line staff, the person that doesn't have any supervisory authority. If you like this video, please put the like button. If you have any comments, suggestions, um, please put them in the comment section below. Thank you, be safe, and have a great day.